So we're going to talk a moment about water and uh, its importance in the body and how different molecules interact with it. So water makes up the majority of our body weight and the majority of all of the cell's contents. So each one of our cells is composed mainly of water. Uh, and therefore our body is composed mainly of water. And water is very important because it takes part in almost all of the chemical reactions in our body. Uh, so it's a, a major component, major component of our cells, uh, of our body as a whole. And it's very, very important for our chemical reactions. And why this is, is something that we have already discussed in our uh, discussion of atoms, and that's because of one main characteristic of water. So remember, water is H2O, and the way that that is kind of drawn out, remember, is our two H's connected to our O. Uh, this does have a couple of other electrons in here. Remember, our hydrogens are sharing two electrons, and that gives us our total of eight in our outer shell there. <coughs> And remember, uh, the characteristic of water that makes it uh, so important to life is that it is polar. So remember our polar covalent bonds. And what did polar mean? It meant that our oxygen is partially negative, our hydrogens are both partially positive, because our oxygen is pulling the electrons closer to it. It's more electronegative than our hydrogen ions. And so we're pulling and pulling and pulling those electrons toward it, which gives it this partial negative charge. And so water, then, is considered a polar molecule, which is very, very important. Uh, one reason that that is important is because it makes a very good solvent. <clears throat> so it makes a good solvent because it is polar, uh, which means that lots of things dissolve in water. So re remember that a solvent is a liquid that things dissolve in. Those things are called solutes. So a solute is a molecule that dissolves in a solvent. So our major solvent in the body then is water. And some of our solutes, uh, for example, would be sugar, uh, so our glucose that we're eating, for example, that's a main one, that's a major energy source for us. Um, also our electrolytes. Uh, just a shorthand here, we'll talk about electrolytes because we're in our chemical um, section. So our electrolytes are going to be our ions, uh, so things like sodium or things like uh, chloride. Um, those are our electrolytes. They're very important to life. They also dissolve in water. Uh, so if we took salt, our table salt, which is NaCl, and we put it into water, then what we see happen is we see the sodium is going to separate from the chloride here. We have a positive sodium and a negative chloride. And the reason that that works <coughs> is very quickly, if we have our oxygen and our two hydrogens here, remember our oxygen is partially negative and our hydrogens are partially positive. And then we have our NaCl. So remember what kind of bond NaCl is or sodium chloride. Remember it's an ionic bond. An ionic bond just means that we have our very positive ion sitting right next to our very negative ion. So we don't have any charge on the actual molecule because there's a bond happening there. But recall that they don't actually share any electrons. They're just our positive ion or our negative ion sitting very close to each other. They're, they're kind of attached to each other in that they're so, um, so drawn to each other. Now, if we place this in water, then what we see happening is we see our sodium, right, which is partially positive, is going to be pulled away from our chloride ion because remember we have these partially negative oxygens here. So our partially negative oxygens are going to surround our partially positive sodium. You can see I'm trying to surround the whole thing. So all of our oxygens are going to be surrounding our sodium. And then the opposite is happening with the chloride. So we have our hydrogens, which are partially positive, are attracted to our negative chloride ion. So in this way we have our hydrogens, are going to be surrounding here, 
a couple more, uh, you get the idea that all of these hydrogens that are also attached to the oxygen and the other hydrogen, our water molecules, are then going to be separating our sodium from our chloride and being dissolved in this solution. So this is why water is a good solvent. We're able to dissolve these. So things like electrolytes, like our sodium chloride, are able to be separated in water and they're surrounded by them. So another important thing that we need to talk about as far as water being a solvent is not just in these ionic bonds. Um, what's important about it, again, is that it's polar. And what that means is that there are certain molecules that are going to be attracted to water and are going to dissolve in water and going to um, work well with water or attracted to that positive and the negative parts of the water molecule. And then there are other molecules that are repelled by water. So when we're talking about this, uh, you can think of oil and water, uh, right? So we know that oil and water don't mix. So oil is an example of a molecule or several molecules that are repelled by water. They don't dissolve well in water. So let's start out with, so recalling that our water is polar, and polar molecules are hydrophilic. So hydrophilic, hydro meaning water, and philic meaning loving. So this is our water-loving molecules. So as we are working through the semester and we talk about some of our biological molecules, we have our polar covalent molecules are hydrophilic, are water-loving. And that's because they will dissolve, dissolve or dissociate uh, in water. So they like to be around water. They, they work well with the positive and the negative. Uh, so they mix well with it. Some examples of this are, are carbohydrates. Uh, specifically our glucose, uh, which is our, our main energy source. Uh, so glucose is a polar molecule, and therefore it's hydrophilic, water-loving. It's be able to be dissolved by water. And we know that because we can put a scoop of sugar in a container of water, stir it in, and we, we are able to dissolve it. So glucose, uh, so our proteins, our proteins are hydrophilic. Uh, so things like our antibodies, which we'll talk about, Insulin, uh, albumin, albumin is a, a major one we'll talk about when we get to the blood. That's our major blood protein. Uh, so those types of proteins are hydrophilic, water-loving, so they'll dissolve in the water. Also our nucleic acids. So our nucleic acids like DNA or RNA, they are also polar or hydrophilic. And then, of course, the electrolytes that we already talked about. Oops, electrolytes. And we'll talk more about electrolytes as we go throughout the semester, but things like our sodium and chloride that we already talked about, uh, which are important for things like uh, muscle contraction, uh, not only in the heart, but also in, in our skeletal muscle, our arms, legs, things like that. So on the other hand, we have our hydrophobic then. So hydrophobic are going to be our nonpolar molecules. Hydro meaning water, again, and phobic meaning fearing. So these are things that do not mix well. Uh, so these do not mix well with water. Uh, they stay separate from water. So they separate from water. So some examples, uh, the, the most basic example is if we think about just pouring some, you know, oil from our kitchen into a, a glass of water and we see that they separate, uh, that they don't mix well together. And so that is an example of a nonpolar molecule. We can see the, the oil sitting right on top of the water. So our nonpolar molecules do not dissolve well. They're hydrophobic. They don't interact with our water. And if we think about what a nonpolar molecule looks like, uh, so, for example, uh, when we talked about our molecules, we did talk about <clears throat> things like carbon and hydrogen when we talked about polarity. And this here would be an example of a nonpolar molecule. Uh, I'll put an R there for the rest of the molecule. 
So this, remember, our carbons and our hydrogens were pretty close on the electronegativity scale there. And so these did not have any partial charges. There was no partial positive, no partial negative. And so this is a nonpolar molecule. And if we look at water then, again, remember it is partially negative, and then we have our partial positive. And in this case, this negative isn't going to be attracted to any sort of partial positive over here because there is no partial positive over here. So it does not dissolve well in water. We also, the same thing over here, this partial positive has nowhere to work on this molecule because there's no partial negative over here. And so we see that molecules like this, our nonpolar molecules, are not going to dissolve in water. And so instead, they just separate from water and they sit on top of it. And so this is our hydrophilic uh, versus hydrophobic. Uh, some other examples of our hydrophobic molecules, uh, which I actually kind of just drew out there. Um, one example would be lipids. So lipids or fats. So any fats such as our fatty acids, which is uh, something that we would eat in a meal. Uh, so we're talking about, and we'll get into more details about these, but saturated fatty acids like uh, butter, oil, lard, things like that. Uh, not oil so much, but butter, <clears throat> lard. Our unsaturated fatty acids, that would be the oils, most of the oils. Uh, coconut oil is kind of up here, but... Um, other oils like olive oil and vegetable oil and things like that would be an unsaturated um, fatty acid. <clears throat> also, uh, steroids, those are also types of lipids. So steroids like our estrogen molecules and cholesterol, those are both uh, lipids. And then our triglycerides, which are the ones that we're, we're typically eating uh, in, a, in a high fatty meal, which include our fatty acids. And we'll talk about that when we get to biological molecules. Uh, so also almost all gases, almost all gases are hydrophobic. Uh, so our gases don't really dissolve in water very well. <clears throat> so we have our hydrophilic up here, hydrophilic, which is water-loving, and we have the different molecules that are water-loving. We have our hydrophobic molecules that are water-disliking or water-fearing. And then we actually have other mo molecules that are called amphipathic. And amphipathic molecules just means that they are both hydrophilic and hydrophobic. How you may ask, it's because they have different parts. Uh, so the different parts are hydrophilic and different parts are hydrophobic. Uh, one example of that <clears throat> is our phospholipid. Phospholipid. Our phospholipid, and we'll talk about this, makes up the majority of our cell membranes. So our cell membranes, uh, which are the outside of our cells, basically the barrier, the wall around the outside of our cell. And in shorthand, and we'll look at this again in more detail, in shorthand what we see is this portion here is our hydrophilic part of our phospholipid, and this portion of the phospholipid is our hydrophobic portion of the phospholipid. So this molecule then is amphipathic in that it has both hydrophilic regions and hydrophobic regions. And this is important because then if we line up a bunch of these phospholipids, for example, this portion of the molecule is going to play well with water. It's going to dissolve in water, uh, interact with water. This portion is not. What it does, however, is it does interact well with other nonpolar molecules. So if you can imagine, if we have a molecule that has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic portions, it plays well with both water and other nonpolar molecules. And we'll see the importance of that um, when we move through different sections. So uh, in summary, we have our water, which makes a great solvent. Whoops. Our water is a great solvent. Uh, you can see we talked about solvent versus solute. <clears throat> Then we talked about uh, polarity and why that's important. Uh, that That is what makes it a good solvent, is that it is polar. And we have things that are hydrophilic, are water-loving, that will dissociate or dissolve in water. And then things that are nonpolar or hydrophobic, that will not dissociate or will not work well with water, will not dissolve in water. And then we have 
those two things combined are amphipathic, which is a region or regions that are hydrophilic and regions or a region that is hydrophobic.